Hello everyone, we will continue with the liquid water transmission through textile material. So, liquid water tra is transmitted through wetting and wicking. First, let us try to understand what is wetting. Wetting means actually absorption of liquid water, liquid and wicking means transmission of that liquid. Okay. First, the fabric the textile structure has to absorb, if it cannot absorb it cannot transmit. Okay. So, liquid water transmission through clothing primarily depends on the fiber characteristics that we have discussed. Okay. So, fiber water molecular attraction that is the surface tension. So, if the surface tension is actually low surface tension then it will get spread. Okay. So, then it will be wet, so which decide which is decided by the surface tension and capillary pore distribution. So, structure of pore, structure of yarn, structure of fabric, so the different types of structure. With, so, one is the fiber characteristics, then the fabric or yarn characteristics. So, uh, liquid as we have mentioned liquid is transmitted in two stages, first is initial stage is wetting, then it is wicking. So, wetting actually is governed by the classical equation, it is by Young's equation. So, the Young's equation is here, it is a gamma S B that means solid and uh, vapor minus gamma S L which is solid and liquid is equal to gamma L V liquid vapor and cos theta where theta is a contact angle. So, it involves the fluid spreading where fiber air fiber air interface within the structure. So, in case of dry condition in dry condition fiber and air interface is there there is no water and when water comes into the fiber if it wets in the structure that means fiber air interface is actually replaced by fiber liquid interface. Okay. So, forces these are the forces different forces acting at solid liquid boundary under equilibrium condition that means, this gamma S L it is acting in the left wise direction due to the uh, presence of liquid solid liquid and gamma L V liquid vapor is acting at the direction of the tangent of this droplet. So, this total effect total this force is balanced by the gamma L V liquid uh, solid vapor solid and vapor. The solid gamma solid vapor is equal to this cos of this liquid vapor plus S L. Okay. So, where gamma represent the surface tension, tension at the interface between the various combination of solid that is fiber, liquid that is say sweat or water and vapor means air and theta is the contact angle between the liquid droplet and surface of the solid to be weighted and low contact angle means means it is a high weightability and as we reduce the, so this picture which is at the top it has it has got very low contact angle that means it it this surface will not be wet because of this low contact angle. If it is low contact angle what does it mean this contact angle low means it is a this value is because it is high okay. this uh, at lower contact angle. So, this is becoming high. So, that is why it, it will not actually wet. So, normally what we need we need this value this S L 
solid and liquid this surface tension between solid and liquid it has to be low. What does it mean? This lower value of solid liquid makes this left hand side it is a high. If it is high that means, the this if uh, the solid uh, liquid vapor is a liquid vapor it is a that liquid characteristics if the it is constant if we consider this liquid vapor is constant and if it is it has to be high that means, the theta has to be low which means that lower contact angle or lower surface tension between solid and liquid fiber and the that fluid that liquid that will make the fabric or structure wet because it will help in wetting. So, that means at lower value of solid liquid means lower value of theta that contact angle that, that which will actually which increases the weightability. So, weightability increases when surface tension between solid and liquid and both, both surface tension and also the contact angle either both of this should be low decreased or at least one of this should be low. So, that we have to see like for a particular fiber like say let us say example of polyester. Polyester is a, a particular polymer which has got a particular uh, constant value of surface tension that means, gamma S L with a water. Okay. That means, this we if we cannot change this value if it is constant then we can do another thing by reducing the theta and this theta we can reduce by redesigning the cross section. That means, if we use the circular polyester the theta will be different than if we use different cross section and uh, the study shows as, as the shape factor increases the contact angle uh, reduces and if we can reduce the contact angle and it will immediately wet. So, that is the typical actually, actually the principle which we use for high active sportswear, high active uh, clothing made of polyester just to enhance the weighting, weightability characteristics by reducing the thickness. Okay. So, what are the factors which affect the weightability? The surface tension obviously, means the surface tension reduces means higher weightability and it reduces with increasing in temperature. So, if we increase the temperature of the environment, temperature of the atmosphere the surface tension will reduce. That means, a fabric which is a surface which does not wet at low temperature with the for a particular liquid say, say water at high temperature it may start wetting because the surface tension changes at the at uh, high temperature. Surface tension reduces with the decrease in density and viscosity of the liquid. If the liquid viscosity is reduced or density is reduced surface tension will, will reduce. So, that we have seen that we can change the surface tension by adding, adding some chemical in water that means, it uh, changes the viscosity by reducing the viscosity we can reduce the surface tension. A particular uh, fiber it is it does not wet, it does not wet in normal uh, condition, but if we add some wetting agent, adding wetting agent means we are trying to play with the viscosity or density of the fluid. So, that actually changes the surface tension and then thus it gets wet and then this is the surface tension. Then weightability also changes as we have mentioned it is by 
reducing the contact angle. So, contact angle is reduced by roughening the surface of the fabric. A smooth fabric surface may not have actually weightability, weighting characteristics. So, rough rougher surface of the fabric faster is the spreading of water okay. due to trough offered by the rough surface reduces the apparent weighting angle that is weighting angle is reduced. The common example is that a fabric in say highly pressed condition if we drop water it, it will not immediately getting absorbed. But uh, up a fabric after use, same fabric after use, if we drop water, because it will immediately take the, it will wet, it will absorb the liquid. This is basically due to the increase in roughness of the surface. A very smooth calendared fabric initially will not take up water. That is due to the actual apparent wetting angle is reduced. So, rough surface of the fabric, so it enhances the weighting. So, if we can design the fabric surface little bit rougher surface, then our weighting will be very high. So, that is why the little bit we can we can design the cloth in that way. Weightability also depends on the chemical nature of fiber that is higher hydrophilicity means higher weightability because that will absorb moisture. So, these are the factors if we know all these factors that means, we can control the weighting characteristics. Fiber roundness or and diameter. So, if we reduce the roundness or reduce the diameter that means, its contact angle will reduce apparent contact angle or apparent weighting angle will reduce. So, that means, a fabric rounder fabric rounder fiber round fiber circular fiber will have higher weighting angle. It will have higher weighting angle that means, it will not weight properly and if we deviate from the roundness that means, deviation from roundness means we are increasing the shape factor. If we increase the shape factor, what will happen? Apparent angle will reduce, which means that cos theta will increase, that means, surface weightability will increase. Similarly, if we reduce the fiber diameter. So, normal polyester, normal polyester if we make say if we prepare a fabric out of normal polyester, it will may not it may not absorb moisture, it may not weak, it may not get wet quickly, but it has been observed if we prepare a fabric made of say microdenier polyester, very fine polyester, it immediately get uh, so it absorbs. So, this is mainly due to reduction in theta apparent contact angle. Okay. So, the all these factors are very important if we understand this factor if then we can design the clothing properly. Okay. So, this fiber roundness and fiber diameter it is very important for designing the clothing for high activity finer fiber or finer with shaped cross section have higher weightability. So, that is why we use for extreme high activity clothing we use this type of fiber. Now, after weighting, so if the fabric uh, the water remains in the fiber fabric structure it is not going to help. This is actually this will help in absorption, but clothing comfort if we want to have proper clothing comfort the water transmission is also important. So, water transmission takes place through wicking the phenomena of water transmission through the clothing 
through the fire structure is known as wicking. So, wicking before wicking, so liquid weights the fiber. So, it weights the fiber and penetrates inside the structure. So, liquid is penetrating inside the structure, it reaches to the interspace between fiber. So, these are the say fiber, it has reached inter in the interspace between the fiber that means a pore, it reached inside the pore and where capillary pressure is generated. So, as soon as it reaches inside the pore, their capillary pressure is generated and by this pressure the liquid is dragged through the, the capillary due to the this curvature of the meniscus. This curvature actually it depends on the contact angle okay. and the magnitude of the pressure this pressure is given by the Laplace law. Here uh, the classical Laplace law it is uh, this is the Laplace law where the P, P is the capillary pressure and gamma L V that we have seen the gamma L V is the, the surface tension between liquid and vapor and this gamma L V cos theta is nothing but gamma S V minus gamma S L that means this gamma S V normally we do not change the gamma L V sorry gamma S V S L gamma between the surface tension between solid and liquid gets changed depending on the conditions and accordingly this numerator of this equation changes and this P is the capillary pressure and R C is the radius of the capillary that means the whatever the distance between the fiber fiber to fiber distance that means pore diameter pore radius this is the radius okay this shows that if we increase the if we decrease if we decrease the rc that means finer pore will create higher pressure so, for finer pore that means, if the pore size is uh, the pore diameter is large, it will not be able to create that pressure. Uh, that means, the water after penetrating inside the structure will remain there. To transmit that water, we have to have uh, R c the lower value. Now, you can see once again this magnitude of the capillary pressure this is equal to gamma L V cos theta into psi. What is psi? It is the perimeter of the capillary. If we see the capillary as a circle, it is a cylindrical capillary that is the perimeter of the capillary divided by the cross section of the capillary, area of the capillary which is nothing but that perimeter of the capillary is 2 pi r c divided by pi r square c that is 2 by r c that is a psi is nothing but 2 by r c. If we replace this 2 by r c that means, this is the formula that did this is the classical formula of Laplace. Law. So, Laplace has got here assumption is that the capillary is is the circular cylindrical capillary. So, it the psi if we can use for for any any sorts of capillary shape ok. And here if we see that as the contact angle reduces if the if the contact angle reduces that means, cos theta will increase contact angle reduce means cos theta will increase that means, p will increase. So, what it shows that at lower contact angle means lower contact angle that means lower surface tension between solid and 
lower contact angle means lower surface tension between solid and liquid means higher weighting that we have seen earlier and also it means that higher pressure. So, if we can design a clothing or if we can design a structure which gives lower contact angle or if we can select a fiber which will give lower contact angle that will give very good weighting, quick weighting and also generate very high pressure of liquid transmission, wicking pressure. So, this contact angle is extremely important and contact angle we can manage with the different factors we have discussed by managing the type of fiber, shape of fiber, structure of surface and we can achieve higher weighting and higher rate of wicking. And this wicking also depends on the diameter of the pore. So, for a particular liquid at constant pressure and temperature, the surface tension at a liquid vapor, liquid vapor interface is constant. So, if the as already mentioned, I have already mentioned that at, uh, if the constant at a certain pressure and temperature, this surface tension remains constant. So, regardless whether or not the surface is being changed, okay, but surface area is being changed. So, if the surface area changes, it actually does not get affected. So, if the for a particular fiber temperature and pressure remains constant, this is not going to change. So, that means the P will remain constant because this is not changing. On the other hand, as the fiber cross sectional shape changes and fiber type changes, the contact angle also get changed. Okay. It alters and which actually drive which controls the pressure. So, pressure here for a particular condition, the capillary pressure is not dependent on the surface tension between liquid and vapor, but the contact angle, because which is actually which is changed due to the cross sectional shape and type of fiber. Okay. And the amount of water that wicks through the channel is directly proportional to the pressure. So, if the pressure is high, so if we can control the pressure, so we can control the quantity of water it, it is tra getting transmitted. So, it is controlled by the theta controlling theta and by controlling the, the diameter of the pore, pore radius we can have. The capillary pressure P increases as the surface tension in the solid liquid interface decreases. So, if it decreases, if so surface tension decreases, then we can it uh, this value will increase. So, gamma L V cos theta will increase and also the capillary radius decreases. So, this two parameters control the capillary pressure. Okay. Solid and solid liquid interface. So, the surface tension between solid liquid interface we can control. Another part is that the what we have discussed till now it is the capillary pressure is it, it works against the gravity. It actually this is the vertically it transmitted. Sometime in many occasion the liquid gets transmitted through the horizontal pore and it is actually controlled by the governed by the Washburn Lucas equation. This is the equation L is the 
length of the liquid uh, the distance traveled horizontal in the horizontal capillary. If the capillary is horizontal and eta is the viscosity of the liquid. So, and this is almost related to with this. So, R c means the capillary radius if the L is proportional to the capillary radius that means, if the capillary radius increases the L will also increase the cos theta if it cos theta increases that is the, the so theta decreases. So, capillary the length traveled will decrease and it is inversely proportional to the, the eta that is the viscosity. So, for as the viscosity increases definitely the length travel will uh, reduces okay. and with the temperature sorry time time with the time it will also increase. So, this is the equation which is used to know the length traveled by the liquid in horizontal layer. Now, we will start uh, we will discuss different uh, based on this uh, basic understanding we will try, try to see the different study result and try to correlate with the basic theories. So, first we will see the effect of presence of hydrophilic fiber in the blend. So, hydrophilic fiber means uh, the fiber which actually gets wet immediately. So, if we in it is a if it wets, so it uh, that means the fiber is absorbing uh, the liquid and how is it controlling the wicking characteristics. This graph shows the in x axis the proportion of viscous fiber, this is actually made of fabrics made of the polyester and viscous polyester being hydrophobic and viscous is hydrophilic. The proportion of viscous is changed from say 20 percent to 100 percent. So, 20 percent viscous means 80 percent polyester. So, accordingly 100 percent viscous there is no polyester. So, 100 percent polyester. So, and the y axis is wicking height vertical wicking height after 1 minute. So, at 1 minute the wicking height is measured. So, this is the curve which shows as the viscous content increases that means, fibers proportion of hydrophilic fiber increases the moisture the liquid transmission the wicking height is reduced. So, if we increase the viscous content the weighting will be very high it will wet, but with the increase in the proportion of viscous wicking height along the warp and wave direction of the fabric reduces both warp and wave direction we have seen it reduces. This behavior can be explained by absorption and wicking phenomena. So, that absorption and wicking phenomena we have discussed viscous is highly hydrophilic fiber it has got good absorbency. So, it absorbs very nicely immediately it will take into the structure which is the first principle of uh, basic requirement of any uh, liquid moisture uh, transmission, but due to high affinity of water when the water molecule reaches to the capillary inside the capillary it forms bond with the absorbing group of the fiber molecule. So, whatever in the fiber molecule there are absorbing groups it forms bond with the water molecule and it does not allow actually to travel it fast. So, that is also important apparently it looks odd because it absorbs moisture, but it is not it is absorb a liquid, but it is not transmitting and that is this uh, understanding is very important to design clothing for high activity where sweating rate is very high. It forms bond. Okay. So, that is why it is uh, the sweating rate that is wicking rate is very low it reduces as the viscous content is high. So, that means, if we have to design a clothing for high activity. So, in that case we have to be very careful 
of selecting the fiber. So actually this molecule that is the group that is the bond formation with the absorbing group actually it, it inhibits the capillary flow along the channel formed by the fiber. Next is that how to enhance this moisture transmission by changing the shape of the fiber. Okay. So, if uh, what are the factors how the fiber diameter and cross sectional shape affect the moisture liquid moisture transmission through fabric. So, in this study what we have done we have used the polyester fiber with different cross sectional shape. One is the circular cross section, triangular cross section and trilobal cross section. Three different cross section of uh, polyester fibers have been used with uh, same denier 4.72 denier uh, fiber. Another fiber which we have used although it is a circular fiber which is micro denier in nature. So, 0.85 denier. So, two types of denier we have used one is the higher denier normal denier 4.72 denier and these are the filament which we have used. And this circular triangular and trilobal filaments are of 4.72 denier and circular polyester of 8.5 very fine denier. So, what here what we have tried to understand the effect of fiber diameter that is micro denier and uh, the shape factor on the, the uh, transmission characteristics that is the uh, liquid uh, transmission that means, it is effect of the, uh, the contact angle how the contact angle is changing. How the, so, uh, the, we, have to, we have tried to change the contact angle by changing the shape factor. The polyester filament with the above specification and the same total linear density. So, linear density of the filaments were same total denier to see the effect of fiber shape and fiber diameter okay. that is why we have uh, selected. Now, the polyester multifilament it is a normal denier 4.72 denier per filament and number of filament is 32 filaments and here 0.85 denier and number of filaments are 200. So, typically we have tried to keep the total denier of the uh, filaments same and these are the cross section this is the circular polyester normal circular polyester of normal denier 4.72 denier and this is a circular uh, micro denier polyester. So, micro denier normal and polyester multifilament and circular triangular and uh, trilobal of uh, this specification 32 denier per filament uh, 32 filament and denier per filament 4.72 and this shape factors are circular is of shape factor 1 triangular with shape factor 1.156 and uh, trilobal has got shape factor of 1.275. So, these are the 271 these are the different shape factors and we can see the cross section this is the cross section. So, circular triangular and trilobal cross section. So, trilobal has got higher shape factor due to the very high specific surface area. So, let us see the fabric parameter we have tried to keep the fabric parameter almost same. Okay. Now, here fiber denier fiber fineness is 5.24 decitex okay. and here it is a in form of decitex it is a 90. Okay. This is the decitex uh, uh, trilobal and micro denier typically it is a irregular cross section it is not exactly circular cross section it is irregular cross section we have got and the warp count we have kept constant weft count is almost constant. So, that is a measured value ends per inch we have tried to keep this is after uh, fabric is being made it is a constant almost and the 
peaks per decimeter is kept ultimately this one and what we have got the fabric cover factor almost constant cover factor and uh, fabric uh, mass per unit area we have tried to keep almost constant, but this is little bit higher and fabric thickness is almost constant. So, what we have tried to see the to eliminate the effect of fiber fabric parameter we have tried to keep the fabric parameter constant only here difference is that the fiber uh, cross sectional shape and diameter of fiber. The effect of fiber diameter when we, we see we have seen that the micro denier fiber gives the wicking rate wicking height or wicking water uptake at higher rate than the normal circular polyester. And height reached by water that is wicking height it is also high. So, that means, if we use micro denier polyester as compared to normal polyester it will give higher uh, absorption higher with water uptake and higher rate of wicking. So, that is how we have to select the fiber. Next is that the effect of shape factor. So, the trilobal with higher shape factor, trilobal with higher shape factor gives very high wicking rate followed by the triangular and circular has got least. So, we have we can uh, see that the with the increase in the shape factor the wicking height increases for same polyester and here it is a this is the with the shape factor we wicking height. So, if we compare if we just plot a curve uh, the shape factor versus the wicking height it increases uh, linearly okay, and at different time level. So, this is at a 3 minute after 3 minute if we see the wicking height and after 1 minute it always increases linearly. So, there is a linear increase in wicking height with the shape factor. So, that which shows if we have to increase the wickability. So, we have to first select the fiber which is not in hydrophilic in nature like cotton we should avoid or viscous we should avoid. Then we have if we select a fiber which is hydrophobic in nature that means a polyester if we select then we have to select a cross section with higher shape factor. And if we have the option of a micro denier fiber filament and normal denier filament we should we must go for the micro denier filament. And in the similar is the case for in plane wicking, wicking earlier it was vertical wicking and in plane wicking uh, it uh, gives the same trend okay. uh, the reason is exactly same. We can conclude here with the increase in fiber shape factor wickability of fabric increases with the decrease in fiber diameter what does it actually show the wickability of fabric increases as the number of capillary increases. So, number of capillary with lower capillary diameter. So, that is the reason of the wickability and also it has been observed at lower diameter fiber diameter the apparent angle contact angle also reduces. Okay. Next is the study on fabric constructional parameter on wicking properties of high active knitted sports wear. Earlier what we have seen it is a oven fabric. Now, we will try to see the effect on the knitted fabric and here again what we have used here the polyester fiber and this fiber actually this fabrics have been actually procured uh, procured from uh, actually international brand high active sportswear which we have taken uh, mainly soccer and tennis. Okay. So, the all the samples what we have observed after collecting the fabrics we have observed the these fabrics are knitted structure. So, high active sportswear is mainly the structure is of knitted characters knitted structure and they are made of 
polyester okay. and most of them almost all the fibers uh, used filaments used are non circular in nature. They are not in circular they are actually there a deviation from uh, circular circularity. Microscopic observation of fabric structure shows the majority of the fabrics are of interlock in nature. So, why they are using interlock that we will discuss. So, interlock fabrics are used some of the fabric samples. So, S means shocker and T means tennis okay. those are high active uh, sports are plated. So, most of the fabrics are uh, interlock in nature and some of the fabrics we have seen it is a plated structure which are knitted, but using two sets of yarn with different denier and separate. So, in plated structure, so two sets of yarns are used of different structure, different uh, denier or different shape factors. And there are fabrics which are, are also double layer in nature. So, two layers, so inner layer and outer layer made of same filament. So, there are, there, so there are three types of structures have been uh, observed. What is one is most of the fibers uh, fabrics are interlock in nature and some fabrics are of plated structure using two different uh, fiber of different shape factors, because these are uh, just to have manage the high rate of moisture. So, finer denier or coarser denier or different shape factor okay. interlock structure, plated structure and and layered structure okay, double layered structure these are the fabrics. So, here we will see that T 1, T 2, T 3, T 4, T 5, T 6, 6 fabric structure 6 clothings were taken from high active tennis clothing they are meant for tennis and S 1 to S 6 they are meant for the soccer. Okay. And what has been observed here the all the fabrics all the fabrics are made of the polyester and these are the polyester multifilament here. So, polyester multifilament yarns are used and main structure fabric structures are interlock structure most of the fabrics plain plated float plated and two layer structure as I have mentioned and different types of cross section ads are used. This cross sections are elliptical cross section it is not basically uh, it is a directly circular cross section. They have tried to use the variation, variation, variation from the deviation from the circularity means enhancing the shape factor. Enhancing shape factor means the enhancing the weakability and transmission characteristics. So, elliptical cross section, hexagonal cross section, triangular cross section, flat cross section. So, these are the different cross sectional shapes are used okay. and where the shape factors have been measured. So, these are the different shape factors and a flat fiber flat filament has got very high shape factor of 1.24 shape factor. So, there are different types of uh, cross section with different shape factors and also the uh, deniers of filaments are also different okay. different deniers of filaments and linear density of total linear density of filaments are used. So, these are the details of uh, the fabric samples which have been used in uh, the studies. So, so, what the conclusion here what is the findings we have observed. So, for uh, ex, uh, for high active sportswear where mainly we have to manage the liquid in um, moisture vapor in liquid form because at very high rate. So, we can we have to use the knitted structure, knitted structure is mainly here is used for ease of body movement because of that high because it is stretchable in, in nature. So, body movement is required 
polyester fibers are used no natural fiber no hydrophobic hydrophilic fiber because it has to wet quickly it has to transmit moisture quickly moisture should not be retained inside the structure it should not react with the it should not form bond with the uh, water that um, uh, the moisture should not form with the fiber and uh, fabric structures are interlock fiber shapes are uh, non circular with higher shape factor so with this idea they have uh, the fabrics are being made and if we see the fabric structure these are the different fabric structures so this structure it's a interlock structure it's a microscopic picture of interlock structure this is the plain plated structure with the two different types of yarns are used this is the float plated structure and these are the fabric with the two layer structure this is the inner layer and outer layer structure so then uh, we'll we'll discuss the uh, fiber structure different types of fiber structure we'll uh, discuss and with the, this uh, so this fiber structure if we see the cross section these are the different fiber cross section as we have mentioned and these are the different types of cross section this is elliptical cross section and here uh, this is triangular cross section here hexagonal cross section okay this is a hexagonal cross section so different cross section of fibers are being used with different shape factor because cross section is changed just to change the uh, shape factor there are uh, these are the other uh, series this uh, this series this fibers are used for tennis t-shirt so soccer t-shirt earlier we have seen these are those are for tennis t c uh, tennis series t and these are uh, soccer series s so with this we will uh, end here we will continue with this findings with the this uh, study and we will see the different findings from this study okay thank you